Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Prevail's Compliance Corner. I'm Orly. And I'm Noelle. I sometimes wish I could just jump on the show and say, I'm Supergirl. <laughs> I need a better name. I'm telling you, right? Something You have a great name. That's a super Orly? name. There you go. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so today's show is going to be pretty exciting. We're talking about something that is newsworthy and relevant as opposed to what we sometimes talk about, which I guess is, is relevant, but not always so newsworthy. So this week in the news, I guess I don't know if it's this week in the news, but um, going on in the um, amongst the shattering classes has been this story that has been going on that uh, Stacey Bostianic, head of the CMMC program, has stated that uh, controls that have three to five points associated with them will no longer uh, can no longer be poemed. I guess I put poemed into a verb. Um, they can no longer be poemed which is really important because it, it really puts a set of priorities in terms of how people can think about the CMMC controls and the NIST controls. Um, Noel, why don't you kind of take it from there and uh, give us the next layer of detail? Sure. It's and, and just to clarify too, it doesn't mean that you can't have poems internally for those things while you're getting ready for an assessment. It means that when the assessors come, there cannot be any POEM items that they can see that are three and five that are still open, you know, still needing to have action done. But that also means that there can be some, and, and don't get crazy with them, obviously, but there can be some of the one pointers that maybe you didn't get a chance to get to, or you're going, you know, you would rather go ahead and handle it after the audit or assessment. Right. So it does give you that opportunity that wasn't available in version one of CMMC where, you know, there were no poems at all. It was all pass or fail. And now there's a little bit of wiggle room to it. The other right. thing that's nice is they give you like they're they're talking about giving a timeline of about 180 days. So that's 60. That's six months. Uh, again, this is all based on the interim rule. So obviously, you know, we have to give the caveat that something could change between right. now and the, the odds are it probably right. won't, but we do have to give the caveat. Right. So just summarizing summarizing that you know five and three pointers you can't create poem have a poem at the time of assessment. Um, yeah. You can have them beforehand. One pointers, you can have poems for at the time of assessment. All right. So that's kind of like, you know, the, the bumper sticker answer. Um, I, I think what is important to know is kind of what does this mean? What do these limits mean for compliance, you know, for organizations that are on this path and uh, kind of looking to be ready by next year when Stacy has said there will start to be CMMC in contracts? Uh, what does this mean for for them, for those yeah. organizations? It's a great question. The biggest thing it means is that you've got a, you have a more definitive prioritization list, right? Instead of saying, okay, well, I'm going to do like a handful of the ones over here and maybe one, three over there and what have you. Right. It does make a lot more sense now to kind of do what I know that you and I have talked about before in, in webinars and podcasts and such. Start with those bigger ticket items, those five pointers, right. because they are more likely going to be complex. Now, granted, every company is different. Every maturity level is different. So a five pointer to one company might be the easiest thing they've ever done to another right. company could be crippling. So definitely prioritize those fives, then prioritize those threes, then prioritize those ones. You know, see, okay, if you have some fives that are going to be really difficult, you know, kind of give yourself a timeline, how long that's going to take then do the same thing with threes than with the ones. I kind of hear the echo of our founding fathers in my head saying, you know, not all, all controls are created equal. Yes. They don't have inalienable rights. Some are more important than others. Those five Absolutely. pointers, they're more important than the three pointers. Absolutely. And, and you got to think about like, for example, one of the five pointers that's out there is the SSP itself, right? That's a five pointer that you have to get done. So, you know, a lot of these five pointers like I said, could be very easy for, for some people like, oh man, I've had an SSP for years. No problem. Done. Another company is probably sweating and you shaking in their boots having to write an SSP. It just depends on where you're at and what kind of resources you have and what kind of additional help you have. Got it. Um, so I think it's important to kind of uh, look at some of the practical implications of limitations, right? You know, we're thinking about some of the five pointers that are really, you know, if you're thinking about um, where you should kind of start on this whole thing. We talk, talked about how uh, five pointers are the, uh, a good place to get, are the, where you should get started. Let's just look at some of the important five pointers that you're gonna need to tackle and just uh, delve into them, dive into them for a moment. So let me just bring up my slide screen here. Poems can't touch this. <coughs> your MC Hammer kind of Very nice. 
spitting on spitting on her slide, but that was kind of funny. <laughs> All right, so let's, this is uh, three point two point one and awareness and training. And uh, you recommended that we should talk about this one. It's an, obviously a very important control. Yes. Um, awareness and training. It's two things. Um, why don't you uh, delve into this and tell tell us why it's important and what what we should know about it? Absolutely. This one I, I wanted to bring up specifically because I think that that is a, a place where a lot of small businesses and, and medium-sized businesses especially will kind of forget, N not necessarily forget, but they just, there's so many other controls and so many other really big ticket items, if you will, that people kind of just sort of focus on those, the technology-based ones, the documentation-based ones. Awareness and training is a big one that gets overlooked, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. This one, ensure that managers, system administrators, and users of organizational systems are made aware of the security risks associated with their activities and of the applicable policy standards and procedures relating to the security of those systems. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, that, I was saying that's a lot of words. That is a lot to unpack. So you have to, basically what it's saying is if you, we sort of dissect it, you have to ensure that all of your employees who have access to the organizational system, understand what their particular role and responsibilities, what those can be, or how those can be security risks, how there can be issues with the things that they can do, what kind of things they have access to do, like an administrator, for example, has higher privileges. They need to have a specific training and awareness to understand that, you know, you're going to have right. access to sensitive data. If you do X, Y, and Z, this is what will happen kind of thing. Um, and also on top of that, the other half of this is making sure that the policies and standards and procedures within your organization and security related ones at that are also trained for, for all these different roles. And also all your employees are made aware of it. So it's not just having them be aware of what their actual roles and how they affect the organizational system and what kind of security issues and risks can come from that access, but it's also having them making sure that you can check the box and say, yes, all of my employees are actually educated about our internal policies and procedures related to security of those systems. So it is way more involved <laughs> than it appears at the surface. There's there's multiple layers to it, which is why I wanted to make sure to bring it up. Yeah, and then on the assessment side, you know, someone is going to, an assessor is going to come in and say, all right, so you know um, who has... Um, you know, what type of security risk your and um, policies your organization has, but they might ask, you know, when were you trained? How often were you trained? Yep. Uh, who gave well, the training? What, what do you know about that the training? training? Yeah, you know, what exactly, how frequently is that training? You know, do you have someone, do you have a point of contact that you can ask questions about that training? If these are the kind of things, you're absolutely right, Orly. These are the kind of things that auditor is going to ask for when they interview your employees. So it's, that's another thing to always remember. There are three parts to an assessment for every control. You're going to examine something. So the auditor or the assessor comes in, they're examining documentation. In this case, it could be, here's a list of all the trainings that were done for these particular roles regarding security training. Here are all the different times that they you know, read the IT security policies and signed off on them or, you know, went to a training about our procedures or whatever. And then they're going to interview the employees. Just like you said, they're going to talk to someone and say, hey, you know, well, what is the policy for X? What is the policy for Y? And right. then they're also going to want to see it in action. So they're probably going to want to see like a slide deck from your training or a recording of the training or right. something like that. Some sort of artifact to say, okay, yes, I can, I can see that you say you're doing this. Okay, great. That's the policy saying they're doing this awareness and training for 3.2.1. I can tell that it's happening because I've talked to the employees and I've also seen the training and it definitely says what it's, it's doing, what you're saying it's doing. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's look at one more, uh, maybe two more. So personnel security. Uh, so ensure that organizational systems containing CUI are protected during and after personnel actions such as termination and transfer. Yes. This is, a, this is a big one. Um, obviously, if you have an employee who leaves on good terms, this is probably not gonna be as big of an issue. If you have an employee that leaves on not so great of terms, that's a, that's a bigger concern. Right. And also, even if an employee does leave on good terms, you don't wanna leave open you know, a door to them to just look at all of your CUI indefinitely. So this is ensuring that you have those policies written, same thing we just talked about, examine, interview, and test. They wanna make sure that you are actually saying, yes, you know, here's our policy. This is how we get rid of that person's access. This is how we track that that, that person's access is done. Here's how we can prove it. So they want to be able to test and see, yep, okay, that person was removed. Here are the audit logs stating that that happened. 
And again, anybody who's involved in that, any administrator or power user, whoever it happens to be, who would take care of that, being able to interview them and have them say, yep, this is the procedure. This is how it's done. I know exactly how to do that. This is a very important one, obviously, to make sure that all that CUI and not even just CUI really, but you know, on, on a side note, the IP that any company could have intellectual property, that's another thing that you have to think about with this as well. So, you know, it's not just CUI, obviously that's what this control talks about, but you really want to think about all of your sensitive data in this one. Yeah. And this is just, uh, you know, I shouldn't say disclaimer, but a uh, little plug, you know, this is uh, one that Prevail can help you with. Definitely. Um, uh, so let's just give one last ex example. Um, I don't know if people who are <laughs> who, can, who are at home can see this, but uh, it says, you know, 3.13.11 systems and communications protection. Um, employ FIPS validated cryptography when used to protect confidentiality of CUI. Yes. This is a tricky one. It's one of the only ones like this um, on out of the 110 controls. You see it says three to five points. It's interesting. That's why we brought that's actually one of the reasons we put it up here because it is so interesting. So if you know if you see in the little tiny note there, if not, if no encryption is used, like none at all, then you subtract five points. If some, some FIPS validated encryption is present, only two points are subtracted, meaning leaving three points for this control. So if you're starting from ground zero, you're negative five points with this. So this is a five pointer. This is a good example of how the maturity level of your organization kind of changes the amount of work you have to put in. So if you have absolutely nothing, this is a five pointer. If you've got a little bit of something, this is a three pointer. So it's got a difference in maturity. This is also another one, like you said, little, little baby plug, uh, Prevail does help directly with the ensuring of FIPS level cryptography for all, all everything with Pre Prevail is FIPS 140-2 encrypted. So you put all your CUI in Prevail and then it's automatically going to be under this FIPS validated encryption. So that is imperative and it needs to be FIPS validated, meaning that whatever solution you use, you have to be able to look it up. So you have to be able to go to the NIST site, look up the actual certification like Prevail. You can go and Google it right now. You could find it in two seconds. This is our certification from FIPS. If, if a company does not have that, the auditors will ask for that. I guarantee you, uh, we have had auditors ask us for that. I am sure that they will ask people in the future. So it's definitely something to right. be sure about. Just because the company says they are, don't trust that. You want to see the certification. All right. Um, so <laughs> I think that the, the notion here to have kind of close on is that, um, look, uh, of course, after we've said before, CMMC is coming. Um, Stacy Bostianic said as much, you know, that it'll be in contracts uh, by May of next year. So when you're looking at these poems and how to kind of manage them, it's important to know that you need to prioritize them, get started with those fives, started with those threes, and uh, you know, work your way, work your way down. Yep, definitely. All right. Uh, so this is the end of this uh, today's compliance corner. Um, if you have questions about compliance and uh, need a little bit of help, uh, we're not a consult, but we can uh, get you 15 minutes with Noel, who knows a whole heck of a lot about this topic and can uh, maybe answer some of your concerns and help you understand kind of where you are in the process a bit more. Um, so until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.